All right, we're going to do another video. This is for Math 1074. I want to review some of the things with fractions before you try to do the checkup on page um, 12, okay, 12 and 13. And um, hopefully you did all right on page 11, and there was a lot of fractions, a lot of fractions in here, but let's review what is involved in doing addition and subtraction with fractions. Remember that with fractions, we always, when we're adding and subtracting, which is what this checkup is about, we have to have a common denominator, okay? We have to change the fraction so that they have the same denominator. Now, this one's easy. I already have the same denominator, so I can just add the two numerators, which would be 8 over 6, and then we can reduce that and have 1 and 2 sixths, and then that reduces and becomes 1 and 1 third, okay? Because I can divide 8 divided by 6, and then both of these are divisible by 2, becomes 1 and 1 third. Now we're going to come to this problem, <coughs> 5 eighths plus 1 fourth, they do not have the same denominator, so I have to find, we call it the least common denominator, it also is the least common multiple, same thing, of these two numbers. Now remember, the first thing to ask yourself is, is there a number, is one of these, um, how do I word this? Could I multiply one of these two numbers to get the other one? All right, because that's always the easiest way. And sure enough, I could multiply 4 times 2 and get 8. So I only need to change this one, and I can keep this one as 5 eighths, multiply by 2 over 2. So I get a denominator of 8, <coughs> numerator of 2, and now I can add 5 plus 2 is 7 eighths. All right, so that one's easy. Now we're going to come over here. We're going to subtract, and we're going to look, remind ourselves of two things here. Number one, I don't have an easy common denominator. I can't just multiply 4 times something to get 10. And uh, I could do 40, but that's not the least common denominator. So one method that the PACE mentions is you can take all the multiples of 4, like 4 times 2 is 8, times 3 is 12, 16, 20, and just keep going, and then take the multiples of 10, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And then you want to find where they have a multiple in common, the smallest multiple that they have in common, and that's called the least common multiple. So, but it's kind of a mind game, all right? So you might try 40, but then ask yourself, oh, can I think of something smaller than that? And yes, in this case, we can come up with 20. All right, 20 would be in common to both. So I'm going to use 20 as the denominator. <clears throat> so times 2, so 14, or 7 times 2 would be 14. 4 times 5 is 20, so I multiply the 1 times 5. Maybe I'll do that just as a reminder. 7 times 2, 4 times 5, 1 times 5. But I'm subtracting. I do have a common denominator, but I can't subtract 14 from 5. Okay? So we have to borrow from the 1. And what I'm actually borrowing is... 20 over 20, okay? Any number divided by itself is equal to 1. And again, I want to have this denominator of 20. So I'm actually adding 20 twentieths to the 5 twentieths. Now the shortcut that always works, and this is what a lot of times students like to use shortcuts and they don't work, but this one always works, is if I'm borrowing 1, then I can take whatever the denominator is and add that to the numerator, okay? And that becomes my new numerator. But then this changed. <clears throat> and now I can subtract 25 minus 14 is 11 twentieths. And I don't have any number out front anymore, and so that's the answer. We're done. All right? Now let's do one more problem, and this is on the checkup as well. 
And uh, they didn't have, I don't remember seeing that they had these in the horn. I mean, they had one page of it, that's right, they did have one page of this. But we're subtracting a mixed number from a whole number. And a lot of students will, will try to just subtract and get eight and two sevenths. And eh, we can't do that, okay? Because we're actually having to subtract the two sevenths from something here. Let's pretend, all right, let's go back to pizza. You like pizza? Let's say it's a youth activity at church and they have 13 pizzas, pepperoni and cheese pizzas and hot wing pizzas and Hawaiian pizza, all kinds of pizzas, 13 pizzas. And then the youth pastor comes in and says, all right, I need to take five of these pizzas over to the junior high Sunday school classroom and two sevenths, all right, two pieces out of, cut, why would you cut a pie into seven pieces? No, right, or we're just imagining anyways. So he's going to take five pies and two sevenths of a pie for the teacher. Well, if we just did 13 minus 5, we would have 8. Okay, that, But that's not what we have. We need to bar, take one of these 13 and cut it into 7 slices so that we can take two of those slices out. Okay, So this is going to become 12, and then I need to have one pizza that's cut into seven slices so that I can take away two sevenths. And again, the key is seven because I need to have the same common denominator. <clears throat> seven sevenths minus two sevenths. So in the senior high classroom, they'll still have one pie that has five slices out of seven, five sevenths. And we can take 12, subtract five, there's still seven slices left, seven pies left, and five sevenths left, okay? And then if you were to check this and work backwards to check your work, you would add two plus five is seven sevenths, which is one. Add that to the seven plus five is 12, plus that one would be the 13, okay? So remember that when we are subtracting from a whole number, we have to cancel, borrow one, I mean, and get the same common denominator, and then you can subtract. All right, hopefully that little bit of review will help you do well on this checkout. Thanks.